Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is Minister Paul, a watchman on the wall in Northern California. I have some important things to say. So it's December 1st. December 1st, 2021. This is going to be for my Patreon account, the remnant family that I trust. It's about noon. So it's about 12 p.m. out here in uh, Northern California. So some things, how, how, where do I begin, Lord? I'll start with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you boldly, Lord, to discuss what you've shown me with others. To, to share the information that was shown me and given to me and revealed to me, Father God. Whether it was a dream or a vision, an actual event, Lord God, you know. The people who are involved, the Holy Spirit, you know. The things I'm about ready to say, Holy Spirit, you know. The people that are, are called according to your purpose to receive them, God, you know. God, you know all things. I'm but a humble servant of yours sharing this information. I ask that you would give me clarity. I ask that you'd give me peace. I ask that you've given me authority and power over all the works of the enemy as I sit here and proclaim what, what I was shown. I ask that you rebuke confusion and fear and timidity for my sake, Father God. And that you'd clear the airways and give people eyes to see and ears to hear what was shown and what is coming as it lines up according to your will and your word. And I say this as Jesus, as my God, who confirms all things, who's in all things, who created all things and who controls all things. I, I say it in your name, in the name of Jesus Christ, without confusion, Jesus Christ, I come. I come, Father God, to your throne to proclaim your truth. Amen. A lot of things have been happening. So whether this was a dream or a vision or an actual event, whether these events actually happened or not, I will leave that up to the viewer to decide. But what I was shown is documented. It began, it began in late October of 2021. I received a, I received a visitation from a, a messenger angel that has been actually visiting me since uh, I was in the sixth grade and showing me things that were to come. And I've shared all that on social media for 10 years now. And well, this, this angel, he came and, and, he, and he, he visited me while I was in deep prayer. And the reason why I had been crying out for help was because I'd come under the biggest spiritual attack of, of my walk, of my life in October of this year. And I've been through a lot of battles and I've stood tall through a lot of battles and I know who I am in Christ. But this was a battle against a principality, a false religious spirit that was being tolerated in the church. And uh, I stood opposed in faith and the angel began to show me some things and I'd like to share with you what he showed me and I'd like to caution that along with this visitation there's I'll show you pictures what I will do is since this is going to be a patron exclusive patron allows me to upload photos in fact there may already be photos there I showed this this angel left a feather in an area that was double sealed. So I had a box that was sealed for emergencies. And inside that sealed box was a jar. And the jar was sealed. So I open, I, I unseal the box. And I unseal the jar. I went through two sealed containers. 
and I open it, and there's a white feather laying there, and I feel the presence of an angel. I fell down as dead. I quickly turned away. I said, I, I said what I knew what the Bible said to say, I'm not going to worship you. I'm not going to look at you. I'm not going to talk to you. It was powerful. And this warfare took on, and the, the, and and this, these angels that were fighting fallen angels. There was de demons attacking this home, and I was in intercession against it. And the angels showed up and began to fight, and he began to fight, and the battle stopped. And he left a feather in there to show how real it was. And I took pictures. I have a whole bunch of pictures, but I haven't shared this full encounter yet. He all, it's the same angel that showed me the number three and seven and said they meant war. It's the same angel that showed me a meteor had fallen behind here and, and hitting the buttes, the Sutter buttes behind us, and it had caught fire, and the fire was raging down towards town as the moon began to turn red, and it got real dark. It's the same angel has been showing me this stuff for over a period of four decades. And I testify that what I'm about ready to say in the presence of Jesus Christ, my King, that I've declared is true. This angel showed me. This angel reminded me of a dream I had. And, and in the dream, the rapture was about ready to just take place. I, this is an actual documented dream on social media from years ago, approximately eight years ago. He reminded me of this dream. And people have seen it, and people know, and people will bear witness of this dream. It was a reminder of a dream from eight years ago during this battle. And in the battle, everybody around me had taken two mandatory vaccine shots. And I hadn't taken any. I had refused. And I was being hunted. And they were looking for me, and I was hiding. I remember I'd went from here, and I'd moved in. This is a house. I'd moved in from a house. I'd moved into an apartment. Uh, I, they, they had caught up to me on the apartment. I went off grid. I was actually walking around without a home and there was, and they were looking for unvaccinated pure blood people. They were proposing a third shot and I was led to understand that that was going to be the mark of the beast in Revelation 13. And they were going to start forcing it on people that hadn't taken any of the shots. And the people who had taken the shots were calling evil good they were calling the people that were opposed to this mandatory beast system. They were calling the people that were opposed to it bad people. And they were saying the people that accepted it and were operating in it, they were saying they were good people. And God said, woe unto those who call good evil and evil good. It was a woe upon those. I'm going to say that again. It was a woe upon those who were calling good evil and evil good. It was a woe coming from God upon those people doing that. Not upon me, upon the people doing that. I was not doing that. I was in flea mode from an oppressive beast system wanting to mark me. And begin, people began to snitch and turn me in. One even falsely accused me of being a thief. There was an accusation that came forward that, that I had stole something from the apartment. I'm telling you, I've never been a thief in my life. It was a lie. They were looking for me now, wanted as a thief, but it was a lie, and there was nowhere to go. There was nowhere to run. I testify that was true. So this, this angel, he reminds me of this dream, and in the dream I had ran into a park. It was a rolling hill park. I remember the grass being very green and vibrant, and it had like small little rolling, like a rolling hill, little rolling hills. And there was like valleys where people would gathered in there on blankets, and they were waiting for a big speech from a man. And, and, and the man, he was up on top of a hill. So it was like a little valley. Just picture this sprawling green rolling hills park with people just laid out all over hundreds hundreds of thousands of people. They had been gathered there to hear this man read from the Bible in my dream that the angel showed me.
So the angel reminds me of this dream, and I realized it was an event that occurred right before the rapture of the church, and that people were going to get cast into tribulation. People I knew, but it wasn't going to be me. But I was on the run. And, and so I run into this park, and I see some of the people I know, but they have ex they they are getting ready to accept the mark. They'd taken the precursor, and they were getting ready to take the real thing. I had not. And on this park, there was a man standing there, and he had a big black Bible open. And he was reading from Revelation 16. He said, I am about ready to quote from Revelation 16 as if he was the word. And he began to, and I looked over and there was Jezebel lady. She was kind of like underneath the mountain, encouraging him and praising him and giving him words to speak like a, a secret, private, and hidden messenger for this man. It was Jezebel. And she was giving him the words to speak. And, and, I, and the Holy Spirit quickened in me real quick. And I'm like, wait a minute. And I was too loud and people heard me and they looked and I'm trying to hide. But rather than hide, I went and confronted this guy. I started to walk up the hill and I was stopped and he was at the top. And I looked up at this man and I said, that is not Revelation 16. Because I knew the word, the word was in me and began to bubble up and bubble up. And I said, that is Revelation 15. You don't even know the word. And he's like, but I am the word. And so I run up and I sprint up this hill and I get to the top and I see the man standing there and I see the Bible open and the pages were blank. The pages were blank. He was making it up. The message was being funneled to him through the principality Jezebel hiding in the shadows. And he was, he was quoting him. He was misquoting the word and his pages in his Bible were blank. He was declaring himself as the word. And I'm told, I'm like, I said, okay, I'm going to send a message to Jesus through this angel. I'm not going to worship this angel. I'm not going to speak to this angel directly, but I was bold. I said, I need to know some things, Jesus. It appears an angel has showed up in my backyard. A crazy backyard where I've seen miracles, signs, and wonders for 10 years. This stuff, I'm like, this is real. This is happening. This feather in front of me is real. It made it through two sealed cases. And now I'm being shown a dream. And I said, I got to know, who was that man on the hill? And the enemy came and attacked me and literally pinned me on the ground. And I heard this voice, and this voice said, are you ready to come home? I heard this voice come over me. When I asked for the identity of the man standing on top of the hill, this voice said, are you ready to come home? And it sounded pretty much like God. And I thought about it. Because aren't we all ready to go home? And so I thought about it, and I thought about it, and this sleep, this spiritual sleep and slumber began to come over my whole body. And I began to fall asleep and fall asleep, and I was weak. I was 50 pounds heavier than you see me here today, just a couple months ago, a month or so ago. I was 50 pounds heavier. <laughs> I've been getting purged. I'm being sealed. It's been shown to me that his people are being sealed. And those who are not his people are not being sealed. And there's a difference now. You can see it. You can feel it. You can see it in people. So he showed me I'm being sealed for the day of adoption of this sanctification process. And I said, who is this man? And so anyway, I'm getting there and... And I, this, this feeling came over me that if I would have just closed my eyes and gave up my spirit right then, I could have just slipped away because I was really sick and unhealthy. When You see, the enemy will come at you when you're at your weakest, but I had help. And I realized, no, I am not ready to go. I realized if I would have stayed in that slumber, I would have slipped away. 
And at the last minute, I shook out of it and I said, no, I'm not ready to go. No, no, I'm not sure. This fear of God came over me of standing in front of Christ like you've never known when I said, no, I'm not ready to go. Wait a minute. And I woke up and God's true voice came right into me like I'd been tuned to, to 101 God FM directly. And it said, you just escaped a hit from Jezebel herself. She put a hit on you. But I sent my angels who are holy, and they have stopped this hit. And they said, don't you listen to that voice. And the principality left. This whole thing lifted off my house, 50 pounds lifted off my house. I've been in, in this outpouring ever since, trying to tell people what has happened. But I haven't been released to tell the whole story. And today I can. So I got up and this voice, just let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. So I said, if I am allowed, if, I, if this is a messenger angel and I am allowed to see who was that man standing in that park as the AC, if I am allowed to see that, if this is not forbidden information, if this is from Christ Jesus, my Lord, and not a religious spirit, then show me. That's what I said in the presence of God. Show me. And I will warn. And a voice said, you cannot show this. And I'm like, well, then show me anyway. And I said, I won't tell. And then there was this conversation that I wasn't a part of. And the veil lifted. And the person who was in my prophetic dream appeared and I saw who it was. It was someone I'd seen before when I had heard this spoken over this person. This is a voice I heard. Now, whether this voice was from the fallen angel or a real angel, a religious spirit, I cannot say. But in the, in the previous, I heard this voice spoken over this same person I saw standing in that park. He said, and he will lead Israel. He will lead Israel. And so the voice I saw, it was a prophecy that came to pass with 100% accuracy in 2020 or 2019. And it said, and he will lead Israel. And I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing. And then I was shown him again, standing in that park with a Bible with empty pages, getting his messages from a demon. And so I realized I've seen a great thing. I've been shown a great thing. What am I to do with this ministry? And I got up off the ground and I began to walk around in the spirit all throughout this house, just praising and worshiping God, just praising and worshiping. I mean, Jesus directly. It was like I was at the throne room of Jesus. And this voice said, now, listen, I testify that this is true right here. I was shown I was shown a second person. I was shown a second person. And they were a Muslim. And he was standing there in full Catholic, Roman Catholic Pope dress from head to toe in Roman Catholic uh, attire as some type of high priest as a Muslim heading for an abomination of desolation. So I've saw, and there were two different people I've shown. And I said, I've been shown a great thing. And then I heard this voice. Are you ready to rapture? So this probably occurred about five weeks ago. I've held this in. I heard this voice. Are you ready to rapture? And the next thing I know now, whether this was me, a vision, a dream, is for you 
to pray over the Holy Spirit in me needs to be the same Holy Spirit in you. If I am talking to people of a different spirit when I'm confessing Christ in here, then that's a conversation that I don't want to have. I want to talk to people who are hidden in Christ and I can feel their spirit within them as they can feel it within me that he is in me and I am in him and we are one in unity with peace and love and joy and faith, and patience and long suffering and goodness and kindness and love. Now I need to feel that in these last days. That's why social media is taking a huge, huge pause for me. Because of this information I've been given, it's not for everybody. It's not to be trampled on by swine. These pearls of wisdom are not to be trampled on by swine. And this is all stuff I'm journaling throughout this period of, you know, a few weeks. And so it comes into November and, and, and it was early November and I'm standing there and it says the, the same voice. It says, are you ready to rapture? And instantly I started <laughs> instantly in the vision. I started taking off all my clothes. Help me, Lord. I had to finish this Forever, who is forever? Who is this for that thinks you're ready to stand in judgment of a holy Savior who's righteous judge? I began to take off all my clothes and I stripped naked and I walked into a area in, in the other room that the light hits and I just stood in this light naked. And it was time for me to stand and be judged. And I was elevated up to a throne room. I can't tell you what I saw around it. I can only hear. And I began to hear a voice. Now help me with this Holy Spirit. I'm standing there naked and I hear, are you ready to rapture? And I couldn't speak. My mouth wasn't forming words. My, my brain, my brain had become, listen, my brain thoughts on earth. As I left earth and manifested in a spiritual realm in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven, I began, I was a spirit being. And I'm standing there naked with my hands up like this. And I'm saying, please accept, please accept me, Jesus. I was not allowed to speak. I was not even allowed to form a thought against this Holy One. It was not possible for me to say anything other than the following words. And this is what I was allowed to say. Something started swelling up in my heart. And all of a sudden, I felt this power over my, my spirit and my heart. And it began to swell up. And I said, I confess Jesus Christ crucified as my Lord and my Savior and my God. I heard another voice or this voice it says I bear witness of this fact on earth as it is in heaven I am not the Christ but I bear witness of the Christ and I testify this is true and the presence of Jesus began to come on me and I collapsed and fainted in real life. And I heard a great voice, a voice of all voices, a voice that couldn't be refrained or stopped or silenced or shut. This voice boomed like many waters and many thunders. And it said, unseal the seals. 
and I'm laying there crumpled in a naked ball. And I heard a second voice. And it said, I bear witness of the Christ. Unseal the seals on earth as it is in heaven. And Jesus, he... <laughs> you understand, I didn't feel worthy at all in this situation. I just knew that I had served Christ in my heart. I knew that I knew that I knew that nothing could separate me from Christ on that day. That's the only thing that I could even get out of my mouth. If it was a mouth, I was like in the spirit. And I stood up and I was commanded to walk over and grab this phone. And I looked and I saw a name in my phone and I'm naked. I've been in the presence of God. The Holy Spirit is literally screaming throughout this house in deliverance and healing and divine power and holiness all over this house. And I did all I did was pray. <laughs> you understand? I wasn't on top of the mountain telling everybody all their sins. I was under attack. <laughs> and all I did was call out to my Jesus. And now I'm standing there with this phone forgiven and redeemed and being sealed and healed. And I get this thing and it says, make the call. And there was a second witness. And this second witness was going to bear witness of opening the seals on earth as it was in heaven. And it was about to be a wrap. And if you missed it, you missed it. And people weren't ready. And the people I knew weren't ready. <laughs> oh, have mercy, Lord. And I'm grabbing the phone and I'm getting ready to hit this button of this day. But I hear Christ and he says, pause. I testify this is true. And I wrote the date down in my journal. And I warned and I warned and I warned people. Pause. And the second witness never said anything. And there's a lot more that happened that I could go on and explain. I need to get myself together and gather myself. Don't, do not feel pity for me. Do not feel sorrow for me. I was saved at the moment that it mattered. At the very moment where it mattered, I was saved by the blood of Jesus and my confession of my mouth with him. And it was like a corrected rebuke. Like you don't know when the rapture is going to happen and you don't know who's ready or not. Uh, you warned my people of the judgment day. And it wasn't no joke. And you had to know Jesus. There was no faking. You know how he says, you know, you know, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we do all these wondrous works in your name and cast out demons in your name? And he said, depart from me. I never knew you. There was nobody saying nothing like that. When it came to me standing there, it, my mouth was sealed shut. And it was speak when spoken to and only speak what I allow you to speak. I was in the presence of the creator. And all I could do was confess him. That he, he had been my Lord and my Savior. He had wrote my name in that book. And I instantly had a feeling that the seals were going to open. And that everything was about ready to change on earth. 
And I've been taking little half breaths ever since that exact moment. I've laid awake at night at three o'clock, at four o'clock in the morning, remembering that moment where I stood at the throne and I heard open the seals and it was about ready to be confirmed by the second witness. And at that point, all hell was about ready to break loose on earth. Wrath, vengeance. And there was people down here running around preparing to be marked up thinking they were ready. And they were, they're probably going to run to their little rapture area and say, rapture me. And they're just going to faint and be left down here was the message. I'll be, I'd, I'd be putting my messages somewhere. This will be a video. I don't know how long it's ran. I'll put it wherever the Lord leads me to. This is not a public message for the whole world. This is a warning to the remnant to be ready. What does it take to be ready to stand before Jesus? Well, I'm 57 and I'm still working out my salvation with fear and trembling. But when it came down to that confession, only one thing mattered was, did he know me or not? And did I know him or not? And it wasn't a head knowledge relationship. It had to be in here in your heart. There was no fake in it. And there was no looking back. And when your time is up, I believe this will happen to every single person at some point in their life. According to the scriptures, it is appointed man once to die and after the judgment and the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, my Lord, my Savior and my God. Do you know him? Find my little stop thing on this new software. Here, give me a moment. God bless you. Don't cry for me. <laughs> I had made it. And it wasn't by any of my works.